All right, so as you can see, this is my Harley uh, 2021 Road Glide. Um, again, I had the motor horn already installed and I have already disassembled it, taken it off, uh, put everything back together again, just as if I had never installed it. Um, here's the old cables. I'll be throwing those away because I did things wrong there. But what I plan to do is, this is the stock horn. It's on the, on the uh, left-hand side of the motorcycle. I didn't screw it in all the way because I didn't. I don't want to. Uh, I want to save myself work later. But I'm going to remove this, and it is attached to the stock cables behind there that go up under the connectors under there. I'm going to pull those out, take this loose. I'm going to get the motor horn installed, motor horn 2.0 installed uh, on the table, get it put together, and then I'm going to assemble it here. I plan to put it on the top just as I did before. It's going to go across this nut here. It's going to span this wood this way across. The horn is gonna be sticking out here, which I really like. Some motorcycles have a footboard here and it kind of would muffle the sound, but with the road glide, it's wide open here. So the sound will just exit out of here and uh, make a really good sound. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, in the first install, I put the compressor here and I noticed it kind of scratched my bar paint here. So I don't like that. Um, I'm going to try to find a new spot. I'm thinking somewhere back under here or in there or somewhere back there. But I won't show that on video, but I'll find the spot. And then when I'm ready to actually start it, I'll start the video up for that. But my goal today is just like my previous video is to provide a step-by-step -step guide for people who are not mechanics, they're not electrical engineers, they're not, uh, they don't know how to wire and splice and all that stuff. I've learned that through installing the first one. And I learned some things that I need to improve upon, um, such as how to actually hook up the stock horn and the motor horn, which I didn't do in my first install and I thought I did. So there's a way you're supposed to do that, creating a Y cable and I'll go through that whenever I get to that step. Um, pretty much show you step by step so that if you have a motorcycle and you have no idea how to install the motor horn 2.0, you can go step by step and follow my guide and it will hopefully help you um, have an easier time installing it. The, the instructions that it comes with are good if you understand, already have a, have a foundational knowledge base for electrical things and wiring and mechanic work and all that stuff but i don't uh so or i didn't so i had to start from scratch and try to figure things out um so i'm going to try to save you time so you don't have to go through that without uh, further ado i'm going to go ahead and take this nut off here uh and remove the stock horn and i'm, I'm going to get my phone stabilized uh get it set on a, a um, mount over there so that you guys can see me as I'm doing it and I'll try to make it as brief as possible. So let me plug it up and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. My camera is situated correctly. I have the stock horn here and I'm going to replace that. So the proper wrench to use is a 13. All right. That gets this uh, cowbell nut off of here. So mine's already loosened. I'm not gonna need to do it. I'm just unscrewing it by hand. I'm gonna pull it off, set the screw aside. Now back behind here, you see the, um, the stock cables there attached to the bottom. One there, one there. I'm just gonna pull those out. About a black little bracket, little mounts to pull those out. So now they're hanging there and the stock horn is over here. All right, so now I have my two um, stock horn wires coming out of the engine compartment. They're already wired, so I'm not going to rewire because these work perfectly fine. But what I do need to do is create a Y spliced um, connector that will enable me to plug both sides into here uh, and then in, in into the stock horn and into the relay. So it's got to come from here and it's got to go to both places, the relay and the stock horn. That's the only way you get both sounds. The first install, I only ran it uh, from here into the relay. So basically the stock horn was installed there, but it was getting no sound to it because I didn't have the wires spliced correctly and connected as they should be. But I'm gonna show you that process when we get to it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pause this video and um, take a part, uh, open up one of the boxes um, to show you all the contents that come in a box and then I will go ahead and assemble my motor horn 2.0 on the table before I'm ready to get it installed So I want to do that first um, 
to get that situated. So I'm gonna go ahead and break the pause video while I get things set up. All right, welcome back. Uh, what I am showing you now is the contents or the contents of the box that you get from Motohorn when you receive it. Um, and I will take out everything to show you what's in it in case you this is the first video you're watching and you haven't watched the first one yet. So you come it comes with the user manual. The user manual has the steps um, in it that you need to make your install successful. There are some things that are kind of presumed and that's why I made this step by step is to try to help those of you who are not electrically or mechanically inclined to figure out some of the things that you need. But uh, so this is the, the instructions and if you follow these steps and actually read them because the first time some of the stuff was written here but I didn't pay attention so make sure you actually read the instructions and on the back is the very important wiring diagram that shows you how to run the um, the wires correctly to ensure that you get the proper sound coming out of the motor horn and the stock horn whenever you install it the orange wires are for the 12 gauge these are the thick ones that you need for the motor horn, and the black is the 18 gauge, which is for the stock horn. 18 gauge are interchangeable, uh, left and right, they don't matter. Um, you can swap them and it won't matter. The, the 12 gauge does matter though, so you gotta pay attention to where the positive and negative sides are, both on the battery as well as the relay and the compressor. We'll get to all that eventually, but that's the user guide. So that's the first thing it comes with. So in the box, you'll also have the, this is the compressor hose. This is what come, lets you get the, the air comes through there to get to feed into the horn to make it blast. A little thank you card. Then you have the actual horn itself. Let me take this apart and show you what it looks like. So that's what it looks like. This is the chrome version. It also comes in black. So this is the horn, this is what it comes with. That's the uh, air compressor hose again, the instructions. Uh, it comes with a bag that's got the 12 gauge and the 18 gauge wire, as well as the connectors, the yellow connectors, pink connectors, it's got a relay box. All these things you're gonna need as part of the install and we'll go step by step on how to use them when it's time. And then this little bag that comes in here is for installing the bracket onto uh, getting the bracket attached to the motor horn and then getting the bracket with the motor horn on it attached onto the motorcycle. That's what these things are for. And then also in here is the bracket. This is the black bracket in the first um, motor horn version. Uh, people had to make their own brackets and I did not want to do that because I'm not a fabricator. So I said I didn't want that version. So I waited and then motor horn came out with 2.0, which has a uh, which has it already made for us. They fabricated it for us. So it makes the job much easier. Um, and so I said, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. And I purchased it. And like I said, I, I like the first uh, motor horn that I installed. It looked great. Um, the only problem was I did it wrong. I did it wrong in some of the parts in some of the places where I installed it. So um, I'm gonna reinstall it this time and try to fix all those issues. Uh, and last thing is in this box, you see the box is empty now, and the last thing that's in this box, this brown box here, is the compressor. This is the air compressor. So this is where you will feed, this will connect to the relay, it will also connect into your stock horn wires, and so that whenever, um, into the motor horn 2.0, everything is kind of goes through the relay, and it can, gets connected into the compressor, and this is what sends the air through to the horn to make it uh, really loud. And even with even without my second stock horn working on my original install, uh, it was really loud. So I was very happy with the sound that it put out. I can only imagine what it's gonna sound like when, when it's done um, and both horns are plugged in correctly as they should be. So next thing I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna do this in the video. Well, actually I will do it in the video, but I will uh, pause it and get my camera set up uh, to show you how to attach the horn to the bracket with the screws. You wanna do that on a table before you put it on your motorcycle because once you get it put on the motorcycle uh, here, there's very little room to maneuver back here. So, and if you watch the first video, you saw I was struggling with screwing in the backside of the bracket. Uh, one of the users that was watching the video as well as Motohorn 
uh, recommended I put it together on the table. So that's what I plan on doing now. So without further ado, here I am talking more uh, too much again. Let me go ahead and turn off this video, get set up, and I'll come back and we'll put it together. All right, welcome back again. So I have my horn here, I have my bracket, I have my screws and nuts and bolts, and I have these small plastic seating, uh, seating plastic, little plastic bendy pieces. Um, these two plastic pieces, the two holes here get popped out fairly easily. They're already popped out really, you just gotta push them out the rest of the way. You see, now you can see through it. And this, goes on the bottom of here like that okay and then it sets down on the bracket where you see the two screws at the end so you line up these two holes with the two holes on the motor horn just like that and you're good to go the second one is this one the little plastic horseshoe looking one it also has a hole you pop that out Put that on the front side, same thing. Line it up on the bottom. I mean, it's uh, the shape wise, it only fits one way. And then that goes onto the front of your bracket. Make sure the holes line up. Once the holes line up, you're going to get your screws. So the long, thin, there's two different ones. There's the short, fat ones, and there's the long, thin ones. You use the thin screws so thin screws pop through um, I'm sure it says what the tall screws are for but sorry so put the washer on we also have small washers also make sure you're using the small washers for the small for the thin screws for the thin washers for the thin screws and then put that on screw it on here so that's on put the third one through here okay put another small washer on put another small screw on or a small um, nut there we go it's nicely uh, lined up on the back side the front side I need to mount uh, line it up a little bit better it's lined up now, screws in. I'm gonna put the small washer on. And I'm gonna put the small screw on, kind of holding the back of the screw with my pinky so it kind of holds it in place. And there it is. So that is, that is installed on the bracket. You see one screw there, two screws there, and that's what it looks like once it's installed onto the bracket. So let me get my, now let me get my wrench out and make sure these are nice and tight. So this is a size number 10. All right, so the first part is complete. That is putting this thing together. So again, you do this on a table, you don't do it on the bike. Put this motor horn and the O-ring, attach it to the bracket, use the three screws provided, the long thin screws, the thin washers and the thin nuts get it all put together and that's the first step um, moving on to the second step which is figuring out where I want to put my stuff my relay and my compressor so I'm gonna pause the video while I figure that out and then uh, I will be back and explain kind of my thought process that went into where I determined to put it so I'll be back all right so the first install as I said I had it running down this way and then the compressor was um, zip tied to this it was it wasn't it wasn't I didn't think it was that tacky I couldn't really see them the way that I, that I installed them I couldn't really see them but the problem is it's exposed to the elements sitting out here and I would as I had hoped or the, the problem that I ran into that you're going to run into as well is that this air compressor hose is only so long so it plugs here into the horn. So that's one side of it gets plugged in there. And the other side gets plugged into here, that notch on the compressor. And the only problem is that's that distance is only however long that cable is. That's how far you can run your compressor. 
away from your horn. So there's not a whole lot of options. I chose to put it here and run it straight down that way because it was a straight connect and it didn't force the cable to be looped or anything like that. Where I'm gonna put it this time is gonna force me to loop the air compressor hose. Again, I think Motohorn, if you guys wanted to improve, you could make this longer and let the end user decide where they wanna put it. And if they have slot extra, they can cut it off. Um, but giving them only this much means that they have very limited choices on where they want to put it, where they can put it. So if, I, if it were longer, I would loop it and I would go in this hole up in here and I would go under the seat, push the cable back here and probably run it in through into one of my saddlebags. But the cable is just not that long. I mean, I don't even know if I have a hole that I could get it back in here, but I've seen people do it back here somehow. I guess they bought their own air compressor uh, hose, but it's just not long enough to do that. So what I am gonna do is put it right here under the battery. And I'm gonna show you where I'm gonna put it. And I don't know if it's if there's a problem with it setting right near the battery, um, but that's where I'm gonna put it. And it's protected from the elements. I've already tested it, so I know that it fits there. Uh, it actually fits very snugly. It's not even screwed in. I'm kind of laying it there, but the, the way the, the cables and things run in here, it's a very nice tight fit. And I'm gonna show you where I'm gonna put it. Uh, but where you end up putting it is going to be your decision. This is just an install to show how I'm doing it and the decision, the choices I made. All right, so no matter where you put your uh, compressor and your relay, you're going to need to access the battery uh, compartment because you're going to need to plug the terminals into the battery at the end. The connectors for the, uh, the motor horn have to get connected into the battery. So you have to be able to access that. So first thing you need to do is unscrew the seat screw. Pulling that out. So, seat screw is out. So the next thing you need to do is take off your seat rest, the back rest. If you have two, take them both off. Next thing you have to do is remove the old shit strap over most of the back seats here. Uh, I'm gonna do that now. You gotta open your saddle bag, loosen it up. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off both sides because I'm gonna actually want to take the seat off and make it accessible and this just pulls right out here. So the strap is loose. I set that over here. I'm gonna just uh, kind of you push backwards some and then lift it up because there's a little brace bracket here that fits under the underside there and if you just pull it back and lift it up the seat comes right off. So now let me start another video so I can show you the battery compartment. Once you have your seat off, um, the newer models, I think uh, this is especially the 2021 Road Glide. I'm pretty certain all the models, the newer models are have this same bracketing system. I'm not 100% certain, but this is not intuitive. I mean, if you're a mechanic, you probably say, you're laughing at me saying, yeah, it is. Well, wasn't for me, so whatever. But the way you take this off, I'll show you step by step, there's two star screws. Unscrew those things first. Okay, let me do that now. This is size number T30, so that's a T30 star screw, so star socket. So get that. And you take these two screws off. So once the two screws are out, um, this little plastic piece here, you can unattach, there's a little button back here, just unattach that and pull it out. And I just put that out of the way, just kind of lay it down to the side. This one also comes out, you slide it. So I just kind of slide it out. And then I set that aside as well. This guy up here unattaches. So I just unattach that, just pull the clip up and pull it out. And I tuck it here. So once you do that, this top area is called a control module. And that gets lifted up by two little clamps. There's a clamp here. And on the other side, there's a clamp there. So you just push that out and lift it up. And then this module flips out. Once that module flips out, you have access to the, the bracket here because you need to be able to touch uh, access the terminals later to be able to connect the, 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 um, the uh, plug the connectors into the battery compartment here. So once you do that, this lifts up. And there's a little metal bracket back here in the back. So you push it kind of out and lift it up. And then it just lifts right off top and you can lay it out of the way. So 
There we go. So this is now totally lifted out of the way and now you have access to your battery compartment. So that's how you do that. So where am I putting my compressor? So again, I thought about it and the compressor hose I can have right here and there's a hole up here. I'm gonna run it through that hole and it comes out up here and I'm gonna push it through. See it right there, kind of coming through there. So I'm gonna grab that and pull it through Make sure it's going under stuff. Don't want it over stuff. It's gonna get in the way later if you do that. So I kind of come under all these other cables with it. See, I'm coming under it. Give a little slack, and I'm gonna set it right here. Just like that, okay? I'm gonna take my compressor over here, and I'm gonna set this bad boy right down in here. It actually seats really nicely. You see that? Just like that. The hose will connect into here. Just like this. Kind of goes over there. Like that. And then the hose is coming down under the motorcycle and out here where it's going to plug into and it needs a slack so that it can flip around here, which is what I was saying, it'd be nice if there was more slack. And then it will flip around and connect into the motor horn um, hole on this side. So now I want to figure out where I'm going to put my relay. And when I figure that out, I'll be back. And right now I'm just trying to figure out situationally where I want to put things. And then I'll actually start working on getting them done. But I also want the relay, which is this box. I want that protected from the elements. In my first install, I had the relay connected to the, the cowbell on the back side and it was between the V-twin engine there, it was just resting there, and I had it duct taped. You couldn't see it, but it was duct taped, so it was exposed to the elements, and this time I want to put it somewhere back here. I'm not sure where, but somewhere back here, and hopefully get it um, tied down or get it uh, bolted down or something, but I'll figure that out and I'll be back. So what I'm thinking for the relay, I tried to lay the seat down on top of where you're currently looking at the relay sitting. So what I'm thinking is, run, uh, drill a small hole through this plastic bracket right there, just kind of on the corner there. Feed a screw through there to lock that down and then plug everything right there into that. All right, so I finally screwed my relay box down. That's what it looks like when it's all done. Um, I couldn't find a nut for the back of it, so I had to kind of find something to work, but it's big enough screw that it was able to fit through the plastic and be really tight so that it doesn't really need a screw back there. And it's so lightweight, it's not really holding up a lot of weight. So I don't think it's gonna be a problem to stay on there. So that's what I did. I could go get a nut for it, but I didn't. So it's nicely, it's nice and tight there. I think that's good enough. So before I put the compressor in here and get everything hooked up, I have to cut and splice the, um, the wires for the stock horn. Here's the, one. Here's the bag. So this is the bag. So there's the diagram. So the stock wires are the 18 gauge wires. The bigger the gauge, the thinner the wire. The smaller the gauge, the thicker the wire. So this orange is this very thick cable here. That's the 12 gauge and that's for the compressor and the motor horn. So this will get cut and sized for the motor horn. And the thin wire, which is here, will get cut and sized for the stock horn. So what I have to do is, this is what I need quite a bit of um, distance, this, uh, quite a bit of length for, because what I'm going to need to do is cut enough. I gotta cut two sides of this and each of those sides has to be, has to, it was a positive, positive and negative. They have to plug into there. I'm gonna have to have, each of these have two different um, cables side by side. The bottom of it is gonna be spun together and the top of it is gonna split out. One side of that is going to go plugged into the motor horn. I'm sorry, not the motor horn, the stock horn that's gonna get seat, seated here at the end, the cowbell. 
It's gonna get seated in there. And then I need a longer side that's gonna run through here, go over here and get plugged into the relay. So that's what I'm going to be doing now. All right, so we have our 18 gauge wire. I just unraveled it. Um, we're going to cut it right in half because both the positive and the negative are going to need the same distance to under the battery compartment. So I'm just going to cut this right in half. That's how we're starting. So that's cut in half. So now what I have to do is I'm going to start with the with one side. So focus on getting each side complete. So this will come up here and it will, um, I need to cut this again, but I need to first figure out before I cut it, how much distance I need to actually reach the battery and connect to the relay in the battery. So I'm going to run it up through here, the little hole that's in, a, in the compartment here and run it down, run it over, try to fish it out down here. There we go. I'm gonna run it over here to the relay. So, right there is where it needs to be. Right around there. A little bit of extra slack there. So then it's gotta come out here and it's gotta connect into the Y splice, which is what I'm trying to make. So, that needs to go out to about right here under the cowbell, so I'll leave a little bit of slack there. So I'm gonna cut this again, right about here. Okay. And then, now this is where I will need to make the Y. Um, and this side needs to be, should doesn't need to be long at all and it will connect into this connector, which goes to the stock horn. So let me get this spliced and set up to show you what I'm talking about. So now we have our two long sides and we have our two short sides. So now to make the Y that we need. So this is where I went wrong in my first video is I did not make the Y, which enables me to ensure that I'm getting both the stock horn sound as well as the motor horn sound. So, as you saw, first I cut them in the middle, then I figured out the distance I needed for the long side and how much I'm gonna need for the short side, and I'm gonna be able to cut some more of the short side off because I really just need like maybe two inches. But that won't stop me from, I'm going to connect these, I'm going, the longness and the shorter beside each other, I'm gonna strip these and I'm gonna put, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna, um, what's it called, entangle them together. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. So these are 18 gauge wires, so I'm just gonna pick the, there we go, oh, locked it. Hmm. Okay, so each one of these, I want to go ahead and cut open just enough to fit into the connector, and then, oh my God, these fucking things are cheap as shit. Motherfuckers. All right, so. Um, there we go. So, there. There, so. You see there, now I stripped the both of them off. And now I'm gonna join them together to become one, one unit. So they are connected. Right? So this is what's going to get connected into the uh, cable coming off of the motorcycle. So it's gonna get connected into one of these. So in order to do that, I need to get one of the pink connectors. I forgot to say something in the part that I'm about to begin now in the video. That's very important. I wanted to make a separate small clip to insert there to make sure you understand. So what I'm about to do is strip uh, the wires, put the connectors onto the wires and heat sink them. But what I'm also doing that I failed to actually state clearly in the video 
was that for each of those terminals that I put the connectors on and I heat sink them, I'm also crimping those cables. So there's a small metal part in the upper parts of each of those crimp connectors. You should get a pair of pliers or something. It's like a circular uh, hoop that the tip of the wire goes through and when you squeeze down on it, it hugs the wire tightly to squeeze it so that the wire doesn't come in and out of those crimp connectors. So just wanted to make sure you understand that part. Uh, so I'll be inserting this into the video now, and now I'll get back to the regularly scheduled video where I'm about to heat sink and crimp connect my first cable for the wires that I'm uh, going to be using. So make sure you do that. Thanks. And then that goes into here. Okay. And then once that's in there, we're going to use the lighter, heat shrink it once again. See the lighter making it melt, which is what we want. And heat sinking it, uh, heat shrinking it makes it, protects it from the elements. So once it's heat shrinked, you know, it melts around the, the wires and it gets really hard. So it hardens around it and makes it uh, very uh, secure from for the elements. So that's there. So now we come back down here and we would plug this now into one of the sides of the stock horn. So it would go in there like that. Okay, and then this short side is what would feed into the cowbell. So to make sure I get the right connector, because I'm an idiot, <clears throat> here's the cowbell. So you see those two connectors on the bottom there? That's what we need to plug into. And to do that, we need one of these guys, which is what I just put on the other side, but you see how that connects there? So I'm testing it now. See, I learned something. So that's the right connector for the cowbell. So this is going to go on the short side. So we don't need a lot of room. There it is. So we need a very, very tiny amount of room there. So I'm gonna cut some of that cable off and get that side connected. Um, so that we can have that ready to be plugged into the cowbell. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of that wire. Okay, so I'll cut about that much off. And now I'm going to uh, strip it. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I don't like that that's falling out though. It seems like it's a little bit <coughs> loosey goosey. I'll try to tighten it a little bit or squeeze it a little bit, make it a little bit tighter. Okay. So now let me tuck that in again. That fits in there better now. So now we have this side. So you kind of tracking what I'm doing here. So I just plugged one side into the stock horn and I'm gonna put this piece, this, um, this piece here, I'm gonna put that on this small short side. Okay, I'm gonna tuck it into the hole there and I'm going to heat shrink it like I did the other one. All right, let me take this out and I'll do it up here. I'll hold it and do it. That way I'm blocking the wind. So I'm basically going to heat shrink this side. There we go, push that in there a little bit and heat shrink it. Make sure it's in there. Yep, it's in there. So it's there. All right, there we go. So you see, now I have my first side. This will go into the wires that comes out of the stock horn, out of the motorcycle, sorry. The, the, wiring, the wiring set that comes out of the motorcycle. This flat side connects into that. The short side is going to connect into the stock horn. And then the long side is what runs up to 
the relay and gets plugged into the relay. Now the relay has the same type of connector, this guy. So I'm going to, on the other side, I'm going to go ahead and strip that. And I just stripped it. So now I'm gonna put this baby in here. Heat shrink this again. I have wind blowing around here, so it's kind of getting in my way. Or I'm getting in the wind's way. Let me put my, oh crap, I feel like it's starting to rain. That's not good. All right, so I have my first Y connector done. This goes into the motorcycle wiring that comes out of the motorcycle. This one gets plugged into the stock, uh, stock horn, and then this runs all the way up the line here and gets put. So it's gonna look like that, and then this is gonna run all the way up and get plugged into the relay. So my, it's starting to rain. I need to move my motorcycle into the garage, and we'll pick up in the garage. All right, so now I'm back in the garage, and let me show you what I did once again. So I have a Y connector now. This is going to ensure that I have both the motor horn 2.0 sound as well as a stock horn sound. This is what I didn't do in my first video. Again, thanks to a viewer on YouTube and thanks to motor horn um, for reaching out to me and, and help me figure out what I need to do. But basically you need a cable that's got one side and has two sides veering out of it. This side will go into the, um, the actual cowbell, the, the, uh, the stock horn, and this long side is going to run up through the battery compartment where I put my relay, and it's going to connect into the relay box up there where I have it now. So I'm going to do a second one exactly like this because this is only good for one side, for positive or negative, it doesn't matter, we can switch them, but I need two of these and I need them to be identical because they're gonna be side by side following the same route. So uh, I'm not gonna show that, I just showed the process for one, so I'm doing the exact same for the second one and I'll be back when I'm done the second. All right, I am back. So as you can see, I have both of my Y connectors completed. This will go into the relay into either slot 86 or 85. This side, which is the, the, um, the piece that the Y originates, the, the base of the Y here, this will go plugged into the stock horn wires that come out of the engine. So that will go on one side. And then this will go plugged into the actual stock horn. Okay, and I have two of them built, All right? So I have one and two. So now I'm ready to connect everything. So now we'll have both the motor horn sound and I will from the other wires, which you haven't cut yet. So this one ensures that my stock horn will have a sound. Okay, it will run through the relay box it will be connected to the engine and it will be connected into the stock horn. And then now I will have my dual sound for both the motor horn as well as the stock horn. So this is done. I'm gonna go ahead and run this. Um, and I think I can get the, I can go ahead and get the trumpet set up because I don't need to do anything else around, around this part of my motorcycle. So once I here, once I get my uh, horn put here, my trumpet horn, I'm gonna put my horn here, I'm gonna put the cowboy here. I'm gonna go ahead and connect all these cables and run them up and get them connected into the relay because I'll be done in this area. The only thing I'll need to do then is to get my compressor in to get the wires cut and sized properly to run from the compressor into the relay and then I'm done. So I'm gonna do that now. So again, this one, We'll get fed into one side here, and that's one, one of the sides, and the other one will get fed into the other side at the base of the, the uh, Y, just like this. Nice fit, okay? And then here's my cowbell. The short ends of these get plugged into here. It doesn't matter which one goes where, so just plug them in however you see fit. One side on each. There we go. So that's fully connected. 
and that's going to lay down just like that. So the wires will be hidden behind there. You won't even see it, okay? And then the wiring from down here will get ran up. Uh, I'll have to, it looks like I'll have to tie it off a little bit or something. Uh, yeah, I'll probably have to figure out how to, I'll probably zip tie it in the back there because the cables are coming out of the motorcycle. There's a little bit showing back there and it kind of hangs. So I'll probably get a zip tie and just attach it to the metal frame right here on the back side of here, just so that is flat against there and it doesn't, uh, it's not running around anywhere uh, or laying around anywhere. So then, and then the long side, I'm going to run up through the hole and go connect it to the relay, which is setting up on the battery. So that's what I'm gonna do now. And because the trumpet, uh, because I'm already done with the trumpet part, all I need to do is plug the condenser wire into that and get it seated on here and get it bolted in and it'll be good. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm just gonna set this here. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this zip tied. Well, I'm not gonna show that, but I'm just, I'm just gonna make sure I get the cables back here secured against the back side of this. That's all I'm gonna do. So they're not kind of hanging there. So I'm just gonna, and you can't see it at all once it's uh, once it's secured. So I'm not worried about seeing zip ties or having it being tacky. So I'm gonna do that now, and I'm gonna pause the video to do it. All right. So let me show you what I did here. So as you can see, now once it's positioned there, you can't see anything, not even from the sides. So if you look at the back, you see there. So I have. The connectors plugged into the cowbell. I have the connectors plugged into the engine. And now the other end is going to run up through into the battery box. I zip tied, you see one, two, these down so that they didn't flop around back there. You can't see them from the back at all. And they're very tight, but they hold that casing down and it also protects them somewhat from the elements. So that's gonna go there. But before I do that, the moto horn needs to get on there onto the top side let me get the nut uh, actually i think the horn i think the horn's got to go in the front let me check yeah, so let's put the bracket back there horn there yeah i think that's better so there get that up a little bit there in yeah if you put it the other way around it doesn't really tighten that well so that's good let me go ahead and get my wrench tighten that up all right so I just want to tighten that down so if you've been following along we have uh, we put on the motor horn to the bracket we found the locations of where we want to put the compressor and the relay. Um, we screwed the relay down into the slot we want it. May not be perfect for everybody, but that's the best spot I thought it should go to protect it from the element the elements. Um, we cut the wires, cut and splice the wires, um, so that we get both the motor horn as well as the stock horn sound. We uh, heat shrunk those to make sure that. Um, they're protected from the elements and to secure the connections. Uh, we're reinstalling it back on here so now it's nice and tight. And now we're gonna take the bottom wires and we're going to run those up. And I will probably run them up here like this and zip tie them somewhere up here, yeah. And then run them across and through. And I sure hope that connects. Uh, let me run them up through, get them through the hole and see see how they fit without um, routing them or tying them off. I sure hope they fit. Okay, so there's room there. Push that other one through. There we go, I got it. I got it, ha <laughs> ha, I got it, fuck you. All right, so let me get my phone, come up here and show you. So you see I fished them from, so they're connected on the bottom down there, you see them? And then the wires are running up through here. We'll do them behind the compressor wire there. They went up through that hole and they stretch back here. And then they're going to get connected into 86 
I think it's 85 and 86. Let me check the instructions. So the stock wires, which are the thin wires, the 18 gauge, go plugged into 85 and 86 on the relay box, and it doesn't matter which one you plug them into. They're interchangeable, so I'm going to find 86 and 85 and plug those in there. And then once they're plugged in, I'm going to see if I can, if I have enough room to be able to zip tie those things so they don't hang there. I'll be right back. All right, so now you see that the two stock horn wires are coming up here and plugging into the relay, which is laying down on top of the box here. And they're plugged into 85 and 86. So now I want to run my, get my compressor in, get the wires cut for that, get the connectors put onto that, and then connect those into the relay box and directly into the compressor that's gonna be laying right here. Then I connect the, connect the compressor hose into the, uh, the air hose into the compressor. I connect the air hose into the air horn, uh, which I can do now. I can actually get that connected now. And then we should be gravy. I get it plugged back up and listen to see if I can hear a dual sound. So I'll be right back as soon as I can get the, um, I wanna zip tie these things off if I have room. That's what I'm gonna be working on now. So you see I'm kinda shaking it, moving it here, seeing where I have room. See if I can uh, tie it off. So I'll be right back. All right, so the I did have just enough to get it ran. So it's very tight here. It runs along here. I have it zip tied here. You can barely see that. I mean, if you're not paying, I mean, if you're not studying it, you can't really see that zip tie. And I try to make it as neat as possible. That holds that wire there. And I also put one on the back side there. Um, let's see if I can get it. There it is. The back side, which holds the wire out away from the engine and goes around the cowbell down here. So it kind of pushes it out. I don't want to touch the engine. So these zip ties are holding this away from the block. So runs up through here, goes down through here, gets plugged into the relay. So that is good. So now we have our stock horn working. Okay. So now to get the, um, the motor horn plugged up. Again, this is already done. The, stock, the, um, the motor horn itself is done. And I love how this compressor hose turned out. Barely any of it is visible. Because the position I put it in, barely any of it's visible. And I love that. And it runs back through here. And it comes out right here. This is where it comes out, inside here. And then that's going to get plugged up, boom. Right up under there. Right up under there. And it'll get plugged up, boom, right into the compressor. So it might go over top, might go on the bottom, I don't know yet. But if I need to lift this up, all I have to do is unplug these from the relay, set them aside. It'll just be one other thing I have to unplug when I need to get to the battery box. But right now I want to get the compressor in, get it seated, get the, the thick um, wires, which are the 18, I'm sorry, the 12 gauge, get the thick ones cut. And I don't need a lot of room for those because they're going to go, I mean, I don't need maybe two, or I don't need... I just need them to reach from here and I don't need to Y splice those. I just need a straight cut. So it's going to be from here. It's going to come over and it's going to go loop under and it's going to connect to the compressor on the bottom. That's the only connection I need for the bottom. So I only need, I would say six to eight inches on the left, on the right and on the left, on the positive and the negative, get those plugged into the compressor, set the compressor in there. But before I set the compressor in there, I want to make sure I get the, the, uh, the terminals connected um, into the battery. So I'm going to just make sure I'm looking at this correctly. So, yeah. so motor horn compressor goes negative into the battery negative terminal. So that's what we'll do with that. So the negative on the bottom of the compressor I'll plug it into the negative and I'll plug it in so it'll even be less room. So it'll get plugged in here onto the compressor and it'll get plugged right into the negative here on the terminal. I think that's the, that's the positive there, but over on the other side is the negative. So I just need to plug it into the bottom of the compressor, run it up, plug it into that terminal, screw it down, and then that will be a yellow one. That will be a yellow one that will look like, where is it? This. So this is the yellow one that will fit onto one side of the thick wire once I cut it. And that will get put down onto the battery terminal there and set on top and we'll heat shrink it and it will be down there. And then the cable will run over this way and then it will plug into the bottom of the compressor 
the compressor will have one of the regular clip ones, clip yellow. So it will look like this. So this will plug into the top bottom of the compressor and this will be the heat shrink part that will get um, the wire through it and heat shrinked. And then that will get plugged into the bottom of the compressor. And I'll do that for both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my wires cut now, get them measured and cut. So we need the negative from the compressor to go to the negative on the battery. So that's one. We have the positive on the compressor that goes to relay number 87, that's two. And then the third one goes from relay number 30 over to the positive on the battery. So we only need three. So I'm gonna cut this into thirds. I'm gonna get it measured into thirds, even though I know I'm not gonna need anywhere near the amount that's here. So like literally, I'm just gonna kind of measure it and I'll just tuck the extra wire that I don't need. So this, and it's all, like I said, it's all localized. We have the relay right beside the battery. So everything is gonna be localized. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut the wire, three of the same sizes, and I'll tuck what I don't need, or uh, zip tie it. Yeah, tuck it and zip tie it. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm cutting three wires, three of the thick gauge wires, and those three wires are going to be connecting my motor horn into the um, compressor and into the battery terminals. That's what those do. So here's my three wires all around the same size. So I'm gonna strip all three sides of each one of them and put the proper terminals on each one of them based on what how they need to be connecting to where so the first one i'll start with the negative coming from the compressor so again this is the compressor it's got those clips the bottom of uh, uh, uh male i think they're male connectors and so i need the female i think i'm, I'm thinking i'm doing that i think i'm saying that correctly so these guys We'll go plugged into here. So you see that? It gets plugged into there. So I know that's right. So there's two sides of it. There's a negative and a positive. And if you look at it, it has a negative and a positive on the bottom. It has a plus and a minus on either side. You see the plus there? And then over here's a minus. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the minus one right now, but the, both of these ends are gonna be done the same from the compressor. So they're both going to need those types of connectors. So I know two of the cables, I can go ahead and get that ready for on one side of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and strip my cable, just like I did the other, except this is a thicker gauge. So about right here. Oh, let me get it up here. It'd help if I had it up here. So, put that down. There we go. So, there's one side. Twist it really well. Put that into one of the yellow connectors. Seat it securely. And then commence to burning it. Heat shrinking it. This is what I did not do in my previous video. Well, one of the few things I didn't do correctly in my previous video. So this time it will be done correctly. Okay, and I'm not sure if you're supposed to zip tie that or um, heat shrink that too. I don't think so. Seems like it would be kind of a, uh, maybe once I get it on there, heat shrink it. I just don't really like fire around a battery, but let me see, so I'm just going to plug one side into the compressor here. And I don't think I'm gonna heat shrink it because it's not gonna be, you see, it's not gonna be exposed to any elements. It's just sitting under there. So I don't think I'm gonna worry about doing that. And then I'll get the other side set up here. So I'm gonna strip this. There we go. You can't see me. Let's just 
twist these together. Push this in here. There we go. Go ahead and get it heat shrinked. All right, so that is nice. And that will go on the other side, under here. Fuck, it's hot. Heat shrinking makes things hot. I don't know if you knew that. So now you know. Okay, so now I have that connected. So now the negative side, this side, has to go into the negative terminal. So I want a terminal clip for this side. So let me strip this. going to be a terminal clip which looks like that slide that in there get it heat shrunk shrink so see that that's awesome so that's the other side that will go to the negative terminal and then the positive compressor goes to relay number 87, which means I need a clip like this for 87. I'm going to go ahead and strip it. Pushed up into here. Heat shrink. And that is all done. So now we have both sides complete. We have the negative side that's going to go to the terminal. We have the positive side that's going to go to relay number 87. Okay? So the compressor is done. That's two of the wires that are done. Two of the uh, wires that are done. The third wire has to go, which is this one, has to go from relay number 30 into the positive terminal. So I'm gonna go ahead and strip this. And I need one side to fit into the relay number 30. And relay number 30 is a snap like that, just like we did for the other. Put it in here, heat shrink it. Those are nice and connected. And I will also, just to be sure, I'm also going to use my pliers just to make sure I crimp these down on the edges. I think you should be doing that too in addition to heat shrinking. And that's good. Plug that back in, take this one out, make sure it's crimped down, good. Push that back in, okay. And then, so the third cable was getting connected from the relay into the um, positive battery terminal. So we need another of the terminal connectors. So let me go ahead and do that. There we go. Put this together. Push this into the terminal connector. There we go. Then let me heat shrink again. And this is the last connector that we need to heat shrink and we are done with all of our connectors.
So everything is gravy. So all we need to do now is get our wires ran, put our compressor, seat our compressor, tuck the wires, um, and we'll go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and um, see if I can position it correctly here. So I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to see this, but this is the one that's going from relay number 30 into the 12 volt. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so I wanted to show at least a little bit of the wiring. So I took the battery compartment off. I showed you that, the plates and all that. And so that I can reach the positive terminal because as I said, the uh, positive terminal, thick wire gets connected there and goes to relay number 30. So right now I'm connecting that to the positive side. Positive is red, so it's on there. So I am going to tighten it up Make sure your power's off and all before you start messing around with your motorcycle. Um, and I'm gonna let that run up here and then it will kind of run around here somewhere and get plugged into the relay, which will be right there. For now, I'll just leave that off on the side for now. So then the negative uh, gets the negative from the bottom of the compressor, goes to the negative side. So the negative is which one is negative, so I can see it. Yeah, so this one here, this one is the negative. So I'm going to get that up here and put that into the negative terminal. So I'm gonna set that there for a second. Plug that terminal into here. See there? Put the screw down on top of it. And I can't do this uh, holding the thing, so basically I'm gonna put the screw on top of them. I'm not gonna record it though. All right, so now my compressor is plugged into from negative to the negative terminal, and the positive is plugged into here, which is going to go into the relay box, and then one more will run from the positive on the compressor into the relay, okay? So that is this side, which is currently just hanging here. So right now, since that's already connected, I wanna tuck my um, compressor into the slot that I showed earlier. So I'm just gonna kinda of tuck it in there. All right, so I pulled my bracket out, or I pulled my uh, compressor out, and I pulled my wires, I just pulled them out. Um, the positive was under it, and the negative that runs through the negative terminal was under the bracket, the plastic bracket, so I just pulled them out. It's still under the edge there, but that's okay. I'm still gonna screw it down there, and now the compressor will seat that in, uh, nicely down. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Be right back. All right, so the I still have the, the uh, control module up, but you see how now the, the uh, compressor is slotted, seated nicely down in here, and I have the air hose running down through here, all the way up through here, running up through here, and then it connects right into the compressor. And it's right beside the metal bracket down there. It's not stopping that, and it shouldn't stop this from going down in here and clipping into place either. So let's see. So you see, everything snaps neatly back into place and the compressor is just tucked away right here on the side of the battery. The wires are all connected nicely down here. And the only thing I need to connect now is the um, this cable from the positive into the correct terminal up here. So I have this one. I have the small ones that go on the sides. I'll go ahead and put those back in. 86 and 87. So that's in. This other one is in or the other side. And those are for the stock horn there. And then the other ones run, this one goes, um, this is from the negative side, so that's good. This is from the positive side. And the positive side from the compressor 
runs to number 87, which is on the bottom down here. Like that. And then the one that ran from the uh, battery 12 volt, which is this one, which I had set aside, goes plugged into number 30. So now everything is plugged up nicely. I will get some ties and tie these down right around here. Probably this one too. Just tie them all down together so that they're at least tied together and then probably tie them down maybe against that down there so they're not uh, all over the place under there. And then I'm going to plug everything else up and start her up. So I'll be back when I get those tied down. All right, so this is everything plugged in and tied down neatly. And now I can get the other things plugged in. So this will slide here where it was. Okay. This will come up here and plug into here where it was. Okay, kind of set those aside. This little guy will come back up here and plug back into here. Just like that. So that doesn't look half bad, right? And that's under the seat, so no one ever even sees that. So everything is now plugged up. In theory, I should be able to turn on my motorcycle and I should hear a dual sound. So I'm going to go ahead and test it and see what happens. I hope for the best. So I'm gonna stop the video and turn it around. Um, and we'll try it together. All right, so wish me luck. I am going to try to turn over the motorcycle and see if I can get the sound. And here we go. No sound. Oh, I think I need my, I think my keys are too far away. Be right back. All right, so the fuse is what I forgot. I don't know if it's fixed my issue or not, but um, your kit comes with a fuse. Uh, that's, where is it? Right there. That green fuse gets plugged into the back of the relay. And that's what I forgot to put in there. I don't know if that's gonna fix it, but I'm about to try it again, see if we have our sound. Hopefully we do, so I can be done with it and consider it a success. So here we go. Ready? Yes, that is what we're looking for. Now we're done. Dual tone. Did you hear that? How fucking awesome that was? So that's how you do it. And my neighbors are probably going to chew me out for honking the horn, but I had to test it. So that is an amazing sound. I mean, just a split second and you heard it. How incredible that is, right? So if you follow these steps, you should be able to do it too. Even if you're a dummy like me. So good luck to you. Oh yeah, can you believe that? Look how that baby looks. Are you kidding me? Perfect. When I sit down, crease of my leg goes right there. Right there, perfect. That little knot goes right between my legs, perfect. Sound comes out on the bottom, boom. Relay under the seat. The uh, air compressor under the seat, you saw it. But isn't that beautiful? Only at Motorhorn, folks. Motorhorn.com. This is the Motorhorn 2.0. This is with the stock horn and the Motorhorn 2.0. Both together with the dual sound. You already heard it. What a fucking amazing sound, right? Beautiful. Beautiful. And it's so loud. Thank you, Motorhorn.